Welcome to my explanation of Geoffrey Chaucer's The Tale of Sir Topaz as it appears in the Canterbury Tales. Okay, now in the framework of the story, the Tale of Sir Topaz is told after the Tale of the Prioress, which is a real downer. So the host wants to liven things up a bit, so he calls on Geoffrey Chaucer himself, the narrator of the Canterbury Tales, to tell a story and to make it mirthful. And here's how the tale of Sir Topaz begins. He says, Listen, lords, with all your might, and I will tell you honor bright, a tale of mirth and game, about a fair and gentle knight in battle, tournament, and fight. Sir Topaz was his name. Now, it turns out that Sir Topaz is a knight who comes from the land, a country named Flanders, where his father is a king and wealthy landowner. And we know that he's a noble knight, and we get a physical description. His face is as white as whole flour grain bread. Uh, he has rosy cheeks and rosy lips. He has a seemly nose. His hair is like saffron. He has a beard that goes below his girdle. He's wearing Spanish leather shoes and a rich robe. He likes to hunt deer. He likes to go hawking. He likes archery. And he's into wrestling. We also learn that Sir Topaz has a group of beautiful maids waiting for him. But we also find out that he is chaste. He don't want none until you, he puts a wedding ring on. All right, so... In his chastity, he decides to go for a ride through the forest on his gray mead, uh, steed. So there he is going through the forest. And while he's riding through, he hears the song of the throstle cock. And it moves him to fall in love. So he rides a little bit more. And then he finally decides to take a nap. While he's sleeping, he has a dream of a fairy queen. And he falls in love with her. So upon awaking, he goes and looks for the land where the fairy queen may live. And he finds, um, after a short ride, this beautiful land. Only it's guarded by a giant named Sir Elephant. Sir Elephant says, you cannot enter here because I am protecting the fairy queen. And... Um, Sir Topaz stands up to him and says, Oh, I'm going to fight you. I'm going to put my lance right in your belly. But first, I got to go back home. So he races back home and he finds his court where his people hang. And he tells him, Hey guys, you're not going to believe this, but I was just threatened by a three-headed uh, giant. But no worry, I'm going to fight him and I'm going to kill him. And I'm going to claim my beautiful fairy queen as my bride. So it's all good news. So minstrels, start playing some music and gather up the friends and we're going to drink wine and we're going to drink mead and we're going to eat royal spices and gingerbread and licorice and sugar. And after that party, they decide to dress him up to get him ready for the battle with the giant. So they put him in some really nice clothes and one of these things, and a coat of arms, and a hauberk made by Jews, and he, they put on a coat of arms with a shield that's red gold with a boar's head on it for some reason, and Sir Topaz says, I'm going to go kill that giant. And then they talk more about some more of his equipment. So he's got leather on his shins, and he's got a sword that he puts in a scabbard made out of ivory. And he's got a helmet that's as bright as copper. And he's got a saddle that's made out of Norwal bones. And he's got bridle that glistens and gleams with jewelry. And he's got a spear made from cypress wood. And he gets on his noble steed and he rides off into battle. And then Chaucer gets a little bit distracted and he starts talking about other knights of famous stories 
like Sir Bedivere and this guy and some other guy and Sir Troy and anyway, it, it really becomes convoluted. So the host finally interrupts and spares the reader of any more of this story and says, enough. He says, no more of this for God's dear dignity. Our host said suddenly, you're wearying me to death, I say, with your illiterate stuff. God bless my soul, I've had about enough. My ears are aching from your frousty story. The devil takes such rhymes. They're purgatory. Um, the host also says that his poetry is like a turd. And that's the end of the tale of Sir Topaz. Now, notice, um, and as you've read the prologue and some of the other stories from the Canterbury Tales, you know, um, Chaucer sticks to mostly doing his couplets. He goes A, A, B, B, C, C, every two, rhymes, every two lines rhyme. Now, in the tale of Sir Topaz, he breaks from that rhyme scheme. He does an A, A, B, A, A, B throughout. Uh, why does he break from his normal poetic verse? Well, I think he's making fun of this guy. Like, uh, Chaucer has spent a lot of time in kingly courts, and he has heard a lot of stories about knights in shining armor and damsels in distress and monsters that have to be slain. And I think he's making fun of these stories by telling an awful one that has no plot. We have a knight who falls in love with a fantasy and then is confronted with a monster, but he doesn't fight the monster. He goes home and parties with his court and never even gets around to fighting. Um, and so Chaucer's making fun of those kinds of stories and saying that they're really not worth much. I hope you enjoyed this uh, presentation on the tale of Sir Topaz, and I hope you learned something. Thank you.